Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel for another episode of the Root Learning series recorded within Train Simulator. In this episode, we're going to take another look at the Just Trains Midland Mainline Network with the Derwent Valley Line, and I'm going to be driving a journey from Nottingham via Derby through to Matlock. The great thing with what Just Trains are doing, I think, with the Midland Mainline um, is the way that they're forming as a network with a lot of potential for different journeys, which um, I plan to highlight these journeys on this channel. Um, so most trains to Matlock start and end at Derby, but certain peak time trains seem to extend to Nottingham, and the service that I'm driving today is one such service. Set a few years ago in East Midlands trains days, we will be following the timetable of train 2 Alpha 1 Zero, which is the 6.17am departure from Nottingham through to Matlock, with our stops along the way including Beeston, Attenborough, Long Eaton, Spondon, Derby, Duffield, Belper, Ambergate, Watstandwell, Cromford, Matlock Bath, and finally, Matlock, with a total journey distance of just over 33 miles. The train that I'm driving on this journey is a Class 156 Super Sprinter diesel multiple unit. Built between 1987 and 1989 by Metro Camel at Washwood Heath in Birmingham, a total of 114 Class 156 units were constructed. Each unit is formed of two coaches for a total unit length of around 46 metres or 151 feet. Each unit weighs around 72 tonnes, and they have a maximum speed of 75 miles per hour. Each coach is fitted with an engine, in this case a Cummins NT855R5 14-litre turbo diesel engine, um, with each rated for a power output of 285 horsepower, or 213 kilowatts, giving a total maximum power output for each unit of 570 horsepower, or 426 kilowatts. I've just jumped into the cab of the class 156 to quickly set up here ready for departure. So the first thing I'm going to do now is to turn the master key by pressing the shift and W key. And now that I've done that, I'm going to move the reversing handle into the uh, forward position and reset the AWS self-test sequence. Now, for some reason, I can't seem to find a driver safety device on this unit. Now, I don't know if that's because they don't have it in real life, though I feel pretty sure that they do, or it's just that it's been missed off um, by error by Armstrong Powerhouse or something, or just that this particular variant doesn't have a driver safety device. I'm not sure, but if you know anything about that, then please do let me know in the comments. Uh, so now I've done that, I'm going to press I to turn on the instrument lights. I can see the signal ahead is clear, so I'll turn off the driver reminder appliance. And of course, as always, I'm going to open the windows on this journey so that you can hear the train a bit better. Now, I'm going to set up the GSM radio system here. So if we just click on the top right button there, I now need to enter the train's head code, which is 2-alpha-1-0. So just press 2. Wait a few seconds, and now press uh, 2 again for the A. A bit like the old mobile phones back in the day and then one zero and then we need the signal number as a three digit code now for some reason the signal at the end of the platform here is a four digit code as um a four nine eight seven uh, so i'm not sure exactly which part of the code to put in uh, so i'm just going to use uh, signal number nine eight seven for now and we'll do the last three digits and i'll just tick that off we're just waiting for it to check now and now we're registered on the GSM radio network um, now I wanted to set up the train FX display so that on the outside of the train um will actually have the correct destination. So on this side, uh, we need to uh, press, I'm just gonna, looking in the manual here to remind me uh, as well. Uh, so we need to click on the down arrow um, to select terminate route and then tick. And now we need to enter a code for the route that we're driving. So for this particular route, uh, in the East Midlands trains variant of the class 156, uh, the route code for Matlock is 0132. So I'm just gonna type 0132 and then tick. Now it's loaded Matlock and it just, it just wants me to confirm that that is the correct route. So I tick it again and now uh, the outside of the train is showing Matlock as the destination. Um, something else I want to do of course is set up the uh, lights here. So I just want to press uh, K to turn off the tail lights, J to turn on the marker lights and H to turn on the headlights. Um, now what I didn't realise uh, initially when driving through this route when I filmed some of the external shots of the train moving is that I'd set the headlight to the nighttime setting even though it's pretty light on this journey. Uh, 
so I've decided to drive with the headlights on the nighttime setting still, uh, just to be consistent. Um, and the final thing to mention, of course, is just the driving controls. So for anyone familiar with uh, British Rail second generation diesel multiple unit, it's very familiar cab here. So we've got the throttle control in front of us now with seven notches of power. Uh, generally, I pull away and accelerate in notch three. And then as we're getting up towards five miles per hour, I go up to about notch five. And then finally, once we're doing 10 to 15 miles per hour, I then go up to notch seven uh, to accelerate in full power. Um, just in front of us here is the speedometer measured in miles per hour and of course as already mentioned the maximum speed of this train is 75 miles per hour. Just to the left of that is the brake gauge with the right hand needle being the brake cylinder pressure gauge. Uh, so the higher that needle is pointing the harder the brakes are applied and when that needle is pointing at zero then the brakes are fully released and uh, just continuing around the cab on the left hand side we have a standard west code three step brake. So we've got the release position, step one, step two, uh, step three, which is full service. There is, of course, a fourth step, which is emergency, um, but I tend to not drive um, using above step two braking where it can be avoided. And of course, also on front, in front of us on the control panel is the uh, horn control, a two-tone horn controllable with the space bar and the B key. <laughs> And so now we've had a look at the setup procedure for the class 156. Uh, let's just take another quick look outside the train and then we can depart out on our journey towards Matlock. As we depart away from Nottingham, the speed limit here is 15 miles per hour, though soon going up to 25 miles per hour. And at this point, we've got around 3.4 miles to go to our first stop, which is Beeston. So I've just shut off the power just to allow the train to coast at 15 miles per hour. And as you can see, the speed limit is now about to increase to 25 miles per hour. And we can accelerate towards that just at the point that you can see coming up just ahead. Seems we're racing a northern class 158 out of um, Nottingham here. Uh, so we can accelerate now up towards 25 and then I've got to shut off the power once again just to allow the train to coast. The speed limit's now increasing to 50 miles per hour. And we can accelerate just as we reach the point on the opposite track there. So we're just reaching the crossover now. We've now reached the point on the opposite track and I'll go up to full power now to accelerate up towards 50. speed limit's now increasing further to 80 miles per hour and of course the maximum speed for this train is 75 uh, so for any speed changes above 75 miles per hour they don't apply to us as the maximum speed of the train takes precedent um, over the speed limit when the speed limit is above the uh, train's maximum speed. So as the speed limit went up to 80 miles per hour, we had around two and three quarter miles to go.
Now coming up on the left hand side is quite a large and distinctive fence that you can see there which is right before a signal. So at this signal we've got around 1.3 miles to go to Beeston and at this point I'm just going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast and um, then uh, we're going to be passing Beeston Yard on the right hand side. At this upcoming signal we've got around three quarters of a mile to go and uh, the braking point for Beeston Station is going to be as the track from the left um, that you can see there uh, actually joins us in a moment. Uh, so at that point is where I'm going to apply the brakes and I'll go between steps one and two uh, to slow us down in time for our stop. made a step two brake application for now which is bringing our speed down quite nicely. Um, here at Beeston Station the platform is quite short and um, we don't want to stop too far along the platform so I don't really recommend entering at faster than 15 to 20 miles per hour. So now I'm looking for the two car stop sign which is just beyond the platform roof on the left hand side. And I can now see that just coming up so we need to pull a little bit further up. The roof needs to have disappeared first. And if we stop here we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Beeston, the speed limit here is still 80 miles per hour, or 75 miles per hour for us, um, with around 1.4 miles to go to the next stop, which is Attenborough. So between Beeston and Attenborough, I'm just going to accelerate up to 50 miles per hour and no faster than that. And then at that point I'll shut off the power and I'm going to apply the brakes at this sort of, well, I've written it down as a green overbridge in my notes, but I'm not really so, so sure it's a bridge as maybe something related to industry. If you know what this is that comes up in a moment, then please do let me know in the comments. Um, so we're just reaching 50 miles per hour now. I'm going to shut off the power in a moment. power's now shut off and you can see it coming up just ahead this sort of slanted green structure that crosses the track and um, see so yeah, I'm going to use that as the braking point for Attenborough station. made an initial step two brake application then reduced the braking momentarily as I felt we might be slowing down a bit too quick and I've just reapplied the brakes to slow us down. Um, here at Attenborough station I need to stop at the two car stop sign which is before the signal um, before the end of the platform.
for some reason I've noticed that when the class 222 passes and I'm in the cab view um, actually um, for some reason it doesn't make any sound I've um, just noticed by the way it's an S sign rather than a two car stop sign I'm just pulling up to it now as I was saying yeah it doesn't make any sound in the driver's cab for some reason but if you're outside the train uh, then you can actually hear the engines on the class 222 Departing away from Attenborough, the speed limit here is still 80 miles per hour or 75 miles per hour for us, uh, with around 3.2 miles to go to the next stop, which is Long Eaton. just see the next signal in the distance there which is um, actually a flashing double yellow aspect um, so at the next signal we've got around 1.2 miles to go to an upcoming 30 mile per hour speed limit and around 2.5 miles to go to Long Eaton station now coming up on the flashing single yellow signal for an upcoming junction that we'll be crossing um, so I've just shut off the power now just to um, allow the train to coast and I'll be applying the brakes in a moment to start slowing us down for the um, upcoming 30 mile per hour speed limit. So just as we've uh, passed this crossing here and we're approaching this overbridge we're now going to apply the brakes in step two which should bring us down to 30 quite nicely. 30 mile per hour speed limit comes into force uh, just after the next signal. Now we're down to 30 miles per hour. I'm just going to allow the train to coast at this point. We've got around half a mile to go to an upcoming 10 mile per hour speed limit. this point if you were to carry straight on on the track that we were on then you'd be turning towards Leicester and ultimately down the Midland Main Line to London St Pancras um, but uh, diverging this way um, we're now turning towards Derby and so we'll be joining the Midland Main Line in a moment and the 10 mile per hour speed limit is for the junction as we join the Midland Main Line. As we approach this signal, I'm now going to start slowing us down for the upcoming 10 mile per hour speed limit. Uh, thankfully, the 10 mile per hour speed zone is quite short because uh, certainly not the most exciting of speeds to drive at. Um, and then afterwards, the speed limit will be going up quite quickly as soon as we've uh, crossed the junction. We 
We're now down to 10 miles per hour, and I'm just going to allow the train now to coast across the junction. Um, so at this point, we're actually joining the route that, of course, I uh, did a video on the other day, and uh, we were traveling in the opposite direction at this point. Um, so we're actually now following uh, part of the route that we did the other day um, up until we reach Ambergate, and then we uh, turn away from the Midland Main Line, and we're back on a completely new section of track. So the speed limit's now increased to 70 miles per hour and we can accelerate just as we reach this next junction now. I can be sure that the rear of the train has cleared and is now on this track. Speed limit's now going up to 80 miles per hour once again, with around half a mile to go now to Long Eaton Station. going to idle the power just approaching this next signal and at this point we're just going to drive by sight so I'm just looking out for the platform coming up ahead and I can now see the platform so I'm just going to apply some light braking to start bringing our speed down. Uh, here at Long Eaton Station we want to stop around halfway along the platform. I couldn't actually see uh, quite a clearly defined stop marker here, uh, so it's a bit of guesswork to know exactly where to stop, but I don't know what that woman's doing standing there, but uh, I think I would have knocked her onto the track at that point, uh, but yeah, I think this should be roughly the correct place to stop at this point. Departing away from Long Eaton, the speed limit here is still 80 miles per hour, though it's actually quite quickly going up to 100 for an HST, as you can see at this speed post. 80 miles per hour for conventional trains and still 75 for us as always. And at this point we've got around 5.5 miles to go to the next stop, which is Spondon. next signal coming up which is the second signal out of Long Eaton um, we've got around 4.6 miles to go speed limit's just increased to 100 for all trains and I just noticed at that crossing there it seems the gates decided to rise and go up as we were approaching and crossing that crossing so I'm glad that we didn't have any incidents like when I hit a bus when driving on the east coast main line or something.
at this signal here. The speed limit um, post is a 100 over 115 and um, we've got around 3.4 miles to go. And now we've reached 75 miles per hour. I need to go between notches two and three of power to maintain the speed here. signal here just before the overbridge uh, we've got around 2.6 miles to go signal here we've now got around two miles to go um, and at the following signal we've got around one mile to go so at the next signal I'm going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast and then I'll be braking shortly after that shut off the power to allow the train to coast as we're about one mile away from our stop. Um, so on this left hand curve here I'm looking for a, a sort of quite distinctive wall on the right hand side. I think I can see it just coming up. I'm going to apply the brakes uh, step two shortly after passing this wall. So we've just passed the wall now. I'll give it a couple more seconds. And now let's make a step two brake application which should bring our speed off quite nicely. Uh, here at uh, Spondon Station we need to stop at the S sign which is around halfway along the platform. should also be noted that the first part of the platform here is abandoned so uh, you might look like you're actually coming in quicker than you thought you were although I did just increase the braking to step three just for a moment as I wasn't sure if we were coming in too quick or not though now I realize actually I probably didn't need to do that as now I've had to release the brakes so I think step two would have actually been okay uh, you can see the S sign just coming up on the left hand side now So if we stop here, we should now be stopped in just about the right place. Starting away from Spondon, the speed limit here is 100 miles per hour and again 75 miles per hour for us and uh, soon dropping to 85 miles per hour if you were driving a faster train. Um, we've got around 2.6 miles to go at this point to the next stop which is Derby.
for now and continuing to accelerate along here towards 75 miles per hour um, then there's going to be a drop in the speed limit down to 75 and at the 75 speed post there will be a warning for an upcoming 30 mile per hour speed limit so that's what I'm looking out for now I'm going to idle the power as we reach that uh, 30 warning also at the 30 warning we've got just over half a mile to go to a 55 limit uh, so that's another reason to idle the power and start slowing down um, so I think we're just about to come up on that warning now. So we have just reached the 30 warning, so I said we're just over half a mile to a 55 limit. And just under a mile to the upcoming 30 limit. So for now, I'm just allowing the train to coast. I'm going to brake lightly for the 55 limit, just as we've passed this next signal coming up. So now I'll brake lightly for the 55 limit. And then as the limit drops to 55, if you then make a step two brake application at the 55 speed post, you should then get down to 30 miles per hour in time. So we're just coming up on that 55 speed post now, about 52. And now let's just increase the step two of braking and that should bring our speed down quite nicely in time for that 30 limit. just see the 30 mile per hour speed post coming up just ahead. We're now down to 30 in time. Uh, from this point we can just coast all of the way into Derby Station. Uh, applying the brakes as we enter the platform here. Uh, here at Derby I'm, aim I'm looking for the sort of four and five car stop sign which is near the end of the platform roof so we've got quite a way up to go. Uh, so we're currently at platform 5A so I'm looking for platform 5B. Uh, I think there is a two car stop marker there as well if I remember correctly. We've just reached it on the left hand side and I applied some hard braking because we were uh, going a little bit too fast. It wasn't uh, quite as far up as I thought so we'd just be on the stop point but we're stopped in roughly the right place. Starting away from Derby, the speed limit here is 30 miles per hour, though quickly going up to 40 miles per hour at the speed post that we just passed. And at this point we've got around 5.3 miles to go to our next stop, which is Duffield. The speed limit is now further increasing to 60 miles per hour. Point. I do need to keep an eye on the signals as I see we do have a double yellow signal ahead. We've got around uh, 0 0.4 miles to go to the following signal. I'm just going to cut off the power at this point as we've passed the double yellow and I'm going to allow the train to coast uh, until I can see what the signals are doing. signal's now cleared to a green with a feather indication to the left hand side uh, so I can now accelerate up towards 60 miles per hour uh, we're going to be crossing I think it's two tracks now to the far left hand side track Now 
and as soon as we've crossed this junction, the line speed is now 110 miles per hour. And at this point we've got around 4 miles to go. this signal we've got around 3.6 miles to go. And once again as we get towards 75 miles per hour I then need to go between notches 2 and 3 of power to maintain that speed. This first signal past the goods loops that we've just passed, we've got around 2.1 miles to go and at the following signal I'm going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast. We've got around 1.4 miles to go and I've shut off the power now. Um, at the next signal we've got around three quarters of a mile to go and then I'm going to be braking shortly after the next signal. See there's a big three arch overbridge coming up in the distance and before that we've got a much smaller uh, looks like a footbridge so I'm going to make a step two brake application now just as we've reached the footbridge there. speed off quite nicely and uh, here at Duffield station I want to stop well just beyond the footbridge there in fact I've just left it in step 2 braking and from that point if you leave it in step 2 braking it looks like we've stopped in almost exactly the uh, place that I intended Starting away from Duffield, the line speed here is still 110 miles per hour, or 75 miles per hour for us, uh, with around two and a half miles to go to the next stop, which is Belper.
this upcoming signal. Um, we've got around two miles to go and the speed limit is down to 80 miles per hour for uh, conventional trains just after the signal. And you can see the 80 mile per hour speed post there. Uh, for HSTs, of course, it's still 110 miles per hour. At the exit to this tunnel, we've got around 1.3 miles to go. I'm going to idle the power just as we reach this next left-hand curve, the first curve after the tunnel. And at the next signal, we've got around three quarters of a mile to go, and I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop at the second overbridge after the next signal. Just reached the second overbridge now and I've made a step two brake application uh, which should bring our speed off quite nicely here at Belper station I'm aiming to stop around halfway along the platform So I couldn't see a clearly defined stopping point at Belper Station, it's a bit of guesswork again, uh, but I think that this area should be roughly the right area to stop. Departing away from Belper, the speed limit here is still 80 miles per hour, with around two and a half miles to go to the next stop, which is Ambergate. And Ambergate is the first station uh, on the Derwent Valley line, so we're going to diverge away from the Midland Main Line shortly, and then we're going to be on the Derwent Valley line all of the way to Matlock. So we now have a single yellow signal which is protecting the junction as we leave the Midland Main Line. Uh, so at this point we've got around 1.2 miles to go to the following signal currently displaying a red aspect and 1.8 miles to go to Ambergate. I'm now going to shut off the power at the start of this four track section just here. Uh, what I'm looking out for now is an 80 mile per hour speed post that we're going to pass. Um, at that point we've got around half a mile to go to the next signal and I need to be braking uh, to ensure that we can stop in time for that red. So 
So we're now passing that 80 speed post and I've started applying the brakes now to bring our speed down. I'm just looking out for the signals ahead and uh, trying to ensure that I do slow down in time. I can now just see the signal. I can see it's displaying a red aspect at present. So a step two brake application uh, should suffice to bring our speed down in time. And the signal has now jumped up to a green aspect. Uh, so at this point we've got around a fifth of a mile to go to an upcoming 15 mile per hour speed limit. So I'm just going to give us a tiny bit of power. And then I'm going to uh, brake just as we approach the 15 speed post. So I'll bring us up to about 20. And then I'm going to shut off the power once again. Now I need to bring our speed down to 15 for crossing the junction here at the point just coming up. We're going to be diverging left and the 15 mile per hour speed limit is for um, all routes, that, well not all routes, but for the routes should I say, uh, diverging left. At this point I'm just going to allow the train to coast and then the speed limit will shortly be going up to 25 miles per hour, around a quarter of a mile from our stop. So the speed limit's now increasing to 25, but we can't really accelerate towards that until we've reached the next right-hand curve. And as I've already mentioned, we are very close to our stops, so I will accelerate up towards 25, and then I'll quickly shut off the power. And then we'll be braking very quickly after that. Um, I want to stop near the end of the platform at Ambergate Station. In fact, you can see the platform just coming up now on the right-hand side. Uh, so I'm bringing our speed up towards 25. I'm probably going to shut off slightly below that, to be honest. I'm going to cut off the power now at around 22, 23 miles an hour. Probably came in slightly quick, so I just applied a little bit of harder braking there. I just fanned the brakes slightly, and now we should be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Ambergate, the speed limit here is still 25 miles per hour, with around 2 miles to go to the next stop, which is Watt Standwell. I'm not quite sure exactly how to pronounce that, it's a slightly odd name I thought. Um, Watt Standwell, I mean, uh, it depends really where people put the inflection on the syllables and so on. Uh, so I've just shut off the power at 25 miles per hour to allow the train to coast at this point, and uh, then we'll be accelerating, we I'll get my words right in a second, we will be able to accelerate in a moment further up to 50 miles per hour, uh, with the speed limit increasing at this speed post you can see just coming up now. So the speed limit's now going up to 50 miles per hour with around 1.7 miles to go.
as we reach 50 miles per hour and then just going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast and we should be able to coast all of the way to the next stop. So at this overbridge with the foam mast just there, we've got around 0.8 miles to go and 0.6 miles to go to an upcoming 40 mile per hour speed limit. Now we're going to round this left hand curve here and there's a sort of hut that we're going to pass and then going to brake just shortly past that hut and that should bring our speed down in time for Watt Stanwell Station. We can now see that hut just coming up on the left hand side there. an initial step one brake application I've just increased that to step two now and you can now see the 40 mile per hour speed limit uh, coming up which comes into force just before our stop with the sharp curve here I'm not sure exactly where the station is so I've been braking to uh, try and ensure I am going slow enough to be able to stop uh, here at Watt Standwell, I'm aiming to stop near the end of the platform. And we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Watt Standwell, the speed limit here is 40 miles per hour, and then we depart immediately through a short tunnel. Uh, at this point, we've got around three point, sorry, not three point anything. At this point, we've got around three miles to go uh, to our next stop at Cromford. Just cutting the power back for a moment just to ensure that we don't break the 40 speed limit before the speed limit increases here in a moment. Uh, so the speed limit's now going up to 50 miles per hour with around 2.6 miles to go. And as we reach 50 miles per hour, I need to go between notches one and two of power uh, to maintain the speed along here. Shortly going to be passing through another tunnel. At the tunnel exit, we've got around one and a half miles to go.
now about to pass a foam mast on the right hand side after the tunnel there and uh, at this point we've got around a mile to go so I'm going to idle the power just at the end of this next right hand curve then I'm going to apply the brakes step one to two shortly after entering the next left hand curve. So I've just shut off the power now as I could see that we were reaching the end of the right hand curve. We're now going to enter this left hand curve so I'm going to apply the brakes in a moment. We are now going to be on a shallow upgrade towards Cromford Station uh, which will help with our braking. So for now I just made a step one brake application. Uh, I may have to release yet as I might have braked slightly too early. I'm just keeping an eye out for the station up ahead. I increase the braking there as I can now see the platform coming up. I don't really want to enter the platform at faster than 20 miles per hour. Here at Cromford Station I want to stop just beyond the platform roof. should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Cromford, the speed limit here is still 50 miles per hour, with around three quarters of a mile to go to the next stop, which is Matlock Bath. Or as they would say, uh, more in the Midlands and the North, Matlock Bath. Just to point out, at Cromford Station we did start on a 1 in 177 upward gradient, uh, so you do really need to apply power before releasing the brakes, uh, just to ensure that you don't get any rollback. So we're passing through this tunnel now, I'm going to idle the power at around 40 miles per hour and allow the train to coast. As we get to the tunnel exit we've got around a third of a mile to go to our stop. And there's also a 10 mile per hour speed limit which comes into force just before uh, Matlock Bath Station. So now doing around 40, I've shut off the power to allow the train to coast. And now I've got the brakes on to start slowing us down for that upcoming 10 mile per hour speed limit, which comes into force at a crossing just before the platform itself. to 15 and I can just see that 10 mile per hour speed post coming up on the ground there. Um, immediately after we've passed over the crossing the speed limit then goes um, straight back up to 50 miles per hour. And here at uh, Matlock Bath um, I'm aiming to stop around halfway along the platform. Again with no clearly defined stopping point that I could see uh, in terms of stop markers. I do love it when platforms have stop markers because it really helps you uh, to know where to stop.
departing away from Matlock Berth. The speed limit here is 50 miles per hour with around 1.2 miles to go to the next and final stop, which is Matlock. And I should again point out that we did start on a 1 in 177 upward gradient. So again, do bear in mind to apply power before fully releasing the brakes. So we're now going to go through a short tunnel here and then a longer tunnel. So at the entrance to this, well I should have said it was a longer tunnel, then a short tunnel, then a longer tunnel again. At the entrance to this second longer tunnel, um, we had around, I was checking my notes here, three quarters of a mile to go and 0 0.6 miles to go to an upcoming 15 mile per hour speed limit. So I'm now applying the brakes for that 15 limit just as we reach this fixed distance signal board here. So, uh, in fact, we might be slowing down slightly too early. Um, there's going to be uh, another short tunnel first before we reach that 15 limit. Uh, so I need to um, be down to 15 by the next overbridge after this short tunnel here. So we're now down to 15 miles per hour in time and you can see Matlock station just coming up. So I'm just going to coast into the station and then I want to stop shortly past the uh, roof here on the right hand side. So just a little bit past the roof now, and we should now be stopping in just about the right place. And so here we are, arrival at Matlock. Um, I just wanted to say thank you very much for watching this video. Um, I do hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. And for the latest channel updates, you can find me on Facebook with the link to my Facebook page in the video description. And if you'd like to support this channel on Patreon, which will allow me to uh, purchase more DLC and produce a wider range of videos, uh, then please follow my Patreon link, which is also in the video description. Once again, thank you for watching.